Hi friends and welcome to this video where we are going to learn about single responsibility principle in ReactJS. In the first part of the video, we'll learn about what exactly does single responsibility principle mean and in the second part, we'll go through a working session where we'll convert a code which violates this principle into a code which follows this principle. So without further ado, let's get started. Now what exactly is the single responsibility principle? So it is one of the programming principles and I won't be going into much detail of all the programming principles and if you want to learn more about them, you can go through this Geeks for Geeks article which talks about them in detail. But in this video, we'll learn about single responsibility principle. Now the single responsibility principle is one of the programming principles which determines how we should modularize code. If you search on the internet, you will find this very common definition which will say that a class should have one and only one reason to change. Now what exactly does it mean and why do we need it? In simple terms, it makes your software easier to implement and prevents unexpected side effects of future changes. Now imagine you have a class or a component which does several things in your program. Now when you have to update or change the code, too many responsibilities will make it more difficult to isolate and fix the problem. The more responsibilities your class has, the more often you need to change it. Now how exactly do I determine that whether my class or component follows the rule of single responsibility principle or not. A very quick and useful rule which I follow is that you have to ask a question that what is the responsibility of your class or component? If your answer includes the word and then most likely you are breaking the single responsibility principle. For example, let's say that what is the responsibility of my component which has data fetching as well as rendering part. Now, because the component is responsible for data fetching and rendering part, it is breaking the single responsibility principle. If you did not get what exactly does it mean, don't worry as we'll go through the code and most likely you will understand it from the code itself. Let's move to the working session part. So I am in the typical create react app setup where inside the src folder of in the app.js file, I have this single responsibility principle component. Now I'll quickly walk through what exactly this code does and what is the output of this code. So as you can see that this single piece of component does the state management and it also fetches the data from the remote API and then process the data and finally render the data on the UI. So you can see the usage of and which I did and let's see what exactly does the API gives. So this API gives us a JSON response in which we have these following fields and basically we filter only the name, email and the contact number and display it on the UI. So the final output of this code looks something like this where we get a list of users with a loading state of success or failure and finally the names of users and on clicking on the names we get their contact number followed by their email. So this is what our end state of this code looks like and you can see that this code doesn't follow the single responsibility principle. Now let us basically break down this code to make it follow the single responsibility principle. Now we can simply divide this code into four major functionalities. The first one would be the remote data fetching part from the API. Second one would be data filtering. Third is following the state management. And fourth is UI render. Now let us first separate the data processing logic from the code. And to do, to do that, what I'll do is I'll create a new file named as use get remote data and move as much as content possible from this file to that file and only have the UI rendering part in this particular component. Okay, so first I'll import the necessary requirements and then I'll also move the state management to this file. Then I'll create this use get remote data function 
and then I'll also copy the state variables followed by the remote processing, fetching and processing data. Cool. And towards the end, let us return whatever is the response. Filtered users as well as the is loading state. Okay. So this looks good. And now let us import this file. Import get use get remote data from dot slash use get remote data and finally use the variables which is being exported from that file okay and then we'll also need to update this state dot is loading because we are directly using the is loading over here yeah so as you can see that now this single responsibility principle component looks much more cleaner than before as we have moved a lot of uh, code to this file. Let us see if the output of our code has changed or not. Yep. So as you can see that the output remains same and if I click on the name we will get the phone number and their email. So we are good so far. Next let us separate the code of data fetching to make it more reusable. Now in this file, uh, what I'll do is I'll remove, I'll move the remote data fetching part to a new file and let me name that file as use get remote data. Okay, sorry, it's already named. So it will be use HTTP get request. And what this file will do is, uh, it will fetch the data from the API and return us the list of users. Okay, so for that, what we can do is, uh, we can move this here and then import the use the relevant hooks and create the use HTTP GET request function. Okay, now inside this function we can have the following state variables, the users and the set users and then this remote data fetching hook part. And finally we'll also return the users. Okay. Apart from that, what we also need to do in this file is use the loader because the loading comes up when we are fetching data from the API. So what we'll also do over here is uh, have the loading state and initialize it to true. Okay, and move the dispatch as well to this file. Okay, now because we also need the reducer over here, uh, what we'll do is we'll move the state management as well, but not to this file, to a new file which we will name as loading reducer. Okay, and inside the loading reducer, uh, we'll have this simple piece of code where we will export function loading reducer and now let me import the loading reducer slash loading reducer 
and let me also rename the reducer to loading reducer okay next is let us return our is loading as well and this will be users okay now this looks good and let us consume this use http get request to our use get remote data file so let me import use http get request from slash use http get request and as you can see that we didn't pass a url as such to this and what we can do is we can initialize the remote url which will be the api endpoint to this and finally pass this url to this function and inside the fetch we can simply use the past url okay now coming to the use get remote data file uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, get the response from the use http get request file and we'll call the use http get request function with the url passed as the parameter okay and we'd also remove the state dot is loading from here and remove the unused imports to make our code cleaner yeah so this looks good let's see whether our output of the code has changed or not yep so as you can see the output remains just the same with our code being more cleaner and now the next step which we'll do is we'll decompose the ui components okay so now what we'll do is we'll decompose the complex ui rendering part into a separate component which will be only responsible for displaying the user details so let me create a new component named as user details and let's move most of the code to this component i can simply rename this to user details okay now let me import that component into our single responsibility principal component and finally use it now let's see the output of our code as you can see the output remains exactly the same and with this we have broken down our code into multiple components and files where we are following the single responsibility principle now to review our code once again and see what we did here let's look at the files we created so in this single responsibility principle we are it's responsible for displaying the users list and then the user details is responsible for displaying the details of a user then use get remote data is used for filtering the remote data then the use http request is used for uh, fetching the api data from the api and finally the loading reducer is used for the state management.
so that is how this particular piece of code follows the single responsibility principle and i hope things are clear now so that is it from this particular video thank you for watching